Hello, welcome to Human Tech, a podcast about the intersection between humans and technology. My name is Guthrie. I am here with Susan. Hello. And again, we are actually live in person in uh, the same room again. So. Yeah, we were live maybe last time. Right? I th- uh, yeah, I, uh, I think there was a one in between. But this is a uh, yeah, this is we're, we're doing lots of studio editing work, so we're in the studio. We're in the studio. Um, this week we actually have uh, a fan request. Yeah, so someone wrote in and asked for a particular topic, and um, so we're going to do that topic. So uh, it, the topic is to talk about progressive disclosure. Fancy name. Mm-hmm. And uh, just when we were talking about this a few minutes ago, Guthrie, you asked me, what is that? Do you remember what I said? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it's it, it, uh, it was there, and then now it's gone. So progressive disclosure is the idea that, well, wait a minute, I should back up because we decided we're going to talk about progressive disclosure and something kind of related. Yeah, we're going to roll it all. Well, explain what it is. All right. So progressive disclosure is the idea that when you're presenting or giving information to someone about anything, instead of just kind of like dumping all this information on them, and, and hoping they can make sense of it, you actually give them just a little bit and then let them choose whether they want more. And then you'd give them a little bit more and let them choose whether they want more. And you could keep going like that. So in the context of, you know, marketing, this kind of makes sense. In the uh, but it's very effective, especially in the world of digital media, and so what this is what we're, we're going to start with big picture progressive disclosure and work our way towards what I consider the extreme of progressive disclosure, which is clickbait articles, um, or just any kind of you know the 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 the, the results. If you keep walking down the path where more progressive disclosure is better. Um, eventually you get to the point where basically there's nothing. They, they don't give you anything until you have to do something, which is <laughs> clickbait. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Well, you know, historically, um, this predates Internet. Uh, yeah, I'm the sure idea it of does. progressive disclosure. Uh, no, it absolutely. Well, so what's the. Um, we were actually. We we're watching uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. From, like, 1992, because I think there's a newer Muppet Christmas movie. This was the old one. There's some newer Muppet movie. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, but it's not a Christmas Carol. Okay, you're right, you're right. Anyways. And, uh... This has something to do with progressive disclosure, the Muppet Christmas Carol movie? (laughs) Absolutely. Okay. So we're talking about um, the Christmas Carol, which was written uh, by Dickens, Charles Dickens. And um, if you've ever noticed that Dickens' books are long and verbose, and, you know, he's all, he describes... He wrote, like, in the 1800s, yeah, not in... Yeah. If, and he's, he's uh, uh, British. Yeah, and um, also known as uh, a, a Tale of Two Cities. David Copperfield. Yeah. He, he, a lot. He, he's great, yeah. Um, and his, but, you know, his books, very, lots of description, this long, kind of a long-winded, uh, very British narratives... Um, one of the reasons he is so good. Um, but if you go back, and maybe this is a myth, I'm not sure. This could just be an urban legend. But uh, my understanding is that at that time, um, you would release these sorts of publications in these, it was almost like these uh, periodical... Serials. Serials. Serial Serial magazines. magazines. So, so you would basically release a chapter at a time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you can, you can think of... Yeah, uh, right, like a tale of two cities coming out um, one chapter at a time, and if you want to know what happens, you have to buy the buy next the edition. Next, yeah. And of course, he was paid by the page, by the number of you know serial articles that was written. So he, he, there was a financial incentive for him to make very long books. So then, when he actually put it together as a book, of course, you get this long. He did write long books. Owner's tome, but the um, I mean, it's not it's, it's not War and Peace, but. Um, st- d- Anyway, so the so the point is is that this idea that oh well you'd have to kind of do take an action to get the next 
in, yeah, but, in but progressive disclosure, I guess that's true. Yeah, I guess that would be a form of progressive disclosure. I was just disclosure. trying to think of progressive disclosure from, from way... Oh, pre-internet. Pre, way back in the day. Well, the, there's there's... If we talk about progressive disclosure pre-internet, and then we, we'll talk about it post-internet also. If we talk about it pre-internet, there's two main places where it comes into play. One is um, having to do with software, not, not internet. The idea being, uh, let's say I'm uh, a customer service rep and I've got someone on the phone and I am trying to figure out whether I'm talking to the right person. And so I ask them like for their account number or their name or something and I type that in and it would show me a little bit like a little summary, right? And then if that was enough, if I determined from that information that I was talking to the right person, then I'm, I'm done with that task. I'm done with that screen. But maybe I'm not sure, like, you know, the address doesn't match or what, some reason I think, oh, maybe that's not enough. And so then I w might click on a button that would say, you know, detail, and then it would open up more. So the idea, so yeah, it can be like used. That's like a usability. Yeah, it can uh, be used that way. And I mean, that's not the traditional way progressive disclosure was used, but I just wanted to mention, you know, that I talked about it for that purpose Way, way back, back when. Way back when the way. But US... even before that, do you know how it was used? No. All right. So this is now, I'm, now I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. I want you to think of a way that this idea would be used okay. that wouldn't have to do with computers, but wasn't the um, the uh, Dickens uh, writing example you gave. you got to give me at least an industry. No, I can't because that's the answer. So what, 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 uh, in what situation, okay, in what situation might one consider using this idea of progressive disclosure that doesn't have to do with uh, a screen and doesn't have to, doesn't even have to do with writing, doesn't have to do with people reading things. That is a really vague, it's going to be so, the vaguest quiz question I have ever asked you. So I'm going steel to... Steel welding? Re <laughs> like railroad I'm, ties? I'm I mean, retracting the question. Okay. Education. Oh, okay. When, when, a, when you're trying to explain something to someone, when you're trying to teach someone something, instead of just, you know, instead of the professor or the teacher getting up there and saying, now we're going to talk about, you know, the War of 1812, and then just blah, blah, you know, just everything there is to know about the War of 1812. Instead, so, so progressive disclosures talked a, about a lot in terms of education and teaching method, because instead of doing that, I would then look at you and say, um, I don't know. Well, I picked a really bad example because you know what? I know nothing about the War of 1812. Little known war. Uh, Do you know about it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Extension so, of so the no, no, no. Don't say anything war. yet. So tell, so tell me something that would be an example of progressive disclosure conversation about the War of 1812. This is a test. So if you were going to use progressive disclosure to talk to me about the War of 1812... How would you start off the conversation? I have no idea. Well, can you give me just a little summary about the War of 1812? Okay. Um, this is almost probably very factually inaccurate. <laughs> so you're not you're not confident about your knowledge about the War of 1812? No, absolutely not. So okay. um, there was... <laughs> so, so history there was, buffs, please forgive us in advance. So we had, there was the Revolutionary War. And all right, you are doing a very poor job of progressive disclosure right from the start because I asked you about the War of 1812 and you're now going to set the scene. I'm setting the scene. Yeah, well, that's not what you do with progressive disclosure. What do you do with progressive disclosure? You would give like a one or two sentence summary about the War of 1812. And then after you give that, I would I might say to you, Wow, why did that happen? And then you might say, well, you know, this was in reaction to mm. the Civil War. You see, so then well, you give me be. a little bit more information. Civil War. Or whatever you were going to say. 
so, you'd give me a little more information, and then you'd stop, and okay, then let me try I'd again. ask let me another try question. Let me okay, try okay, we're gonna try again. Um, due to uh, a tariff conflict, the British whooped up on the Americans and burnt down the U.S. Capitol. Seriously? Yeah. So the British were uh, were imposing a tariff. Or no, the, the U.S. was imposing a tariff. It's, and the British got mad and burnt down our U.S. capital? It's a little more complicated. It has to do with holding American sailors on maritime vessels hostage because of something. And there was some... Yeah, it was a combination of... It was basically over trade and mercantilism. You know, I'm really regretting having picked the War of 1812. Um, so. No, but this is okay. This is good. Okay. So um, so you're saying that, I mean, because we had a revolutionary war in in 17, you know, 80s and 90s. Yeah. So you're saying by, I mean, 1812 is not very long after not that. Not very long after. But, but you're saying that shortly after the revolutionary war, we were already like, or, or still trading. Had started trading again with Britain. We had never stopped. Britain, never Britain stopped. was the, was always, I think, ex- with the exception of maybe France, as the largest trading partner of the original colonies. I mean, it was the. I mean, it was. It would be like it'd be like saying you got in a in a tiff like a tiff with Europe, and then you just stop trading with the you know, okay. with like the EU. Okay. I mean, okay. It was the economic superpower, and yeah. So you had to trade with them. If you, you were surprise, survive. surprise. The, the United States spoke English, and Britain spoke English, so it's a good to do trading partners with. They had the cod and the rum. But and, you're saying that uh, e- so even though we were still trading, there was seemed to to be. Uh, continuing skirmishes and 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 non-agreements. Yeah, yeah. So, so the United States was definitely sovereign, and the British had pulled their troops out, but they they were still out to protect their own interests. Um, at but let's all right. But let's get back to the war. Yeah. Of eighteen twelve. Well, you got to remember, there's there's weird Napoleon stuff going on too in Europe. Yeah. So that was just, having an effect. Yeah, there was just there's like there's just a lot of stuff going on. And so there was this skirmish, and they burnt down our capital, which sounds. Uh, so yeah, so the it was a, a revolutionary war to electric boogaloo, but in this case, they just showed up, and they would it just. It, it, the only reason it just wasn't close this time. So how long did uh, this war last? It was short. It was a couple of years. And did I think the United States again unsuccessfully invaded Canada. I think we took over the capital of Canada because we were going to annex it for a hot second, but that didn't really work out, which right. we should have done. All right, so let's get off the War of 1812 and let's get back to progressive But yeah, yeah no one knows that, that we lost and the British burnt down the U.S. Capitol building. Yeah, it sounds vaguely familiar, but... Um... I'm just like, oh, okay, well... Guess so, we're, we're which allowed us to build a new one. Yes, the That's which the good news. Um, that is the good news, and it allowed. It, yes, the so so the after that they they redid the whole capital and they and they created um, the whole capital building and structure, which which included, uh, I believe, the fancy dome that was finishing up just as Lincoln was getting inaugurated a mere thirty years later. That took us a long time to build. Um, to build. The Capitol to build the dome on the Capitol building. Yeah. yeah so I'm anyway, that's that. an that would be kind of an example of progressive disclosure, but I don't know that you're particularly good at it. But this. But that makes a lot of sense because I'm a horrible marketer. Well, that well, progressive disclosure doesn't have anything to do with marketing. It doesn't. Hmm. It has. It's. It's a. It's a. It has to do with information disclosure, and and the term comes from you know if you talk about the term disclosure, I mean that's a psychology term meaning that uh, you'll be more likely to disclose information about you if I first disclose a little bit about me, and so I might tell you you know why. Um, I really like sushi, and then because I've shared with you about that, you might share with me about something you like or don't like, and that's how we, the idea is that's how we build a relationship, that's, you know, how we build a conversation, so I think progressive disclosure kind of comes from that idea, but anyway, 
So do you think progressive, well, so you don't necessarily like progressive disclosure. As, I probably hate progressive disclosure. As a way of you communicating or as a way of you uh, uh, consuming information? Absolutely both. But that's just me because I'm weird. So if you're going to read an article online. So yeah, so let's, let's, so let's actually, let's back up. Let's, let's take, yeah. let's take, okay, so we've, we've done some old examples. Let's just take three modern examples of how progressive exposure works today. Okay. All right. And so I'll, I'll let you do this. You seem to have a better handle. Well, I mean, uh, if you go to any quote news site, unquote, if you go to CNN, if you go to, uh, uh, Fox News, if you go to any, uh, uh, if, you know, if you go to Vox, any news site at all, you're going to read um, a headline. You maybe just read the headline. Uh, or you might read a headline and a, and a couple of sentences. And then if you're interested in that, you click on that and it takes you to an article. And while you're reading the article, there might even be something to click on to get uh, to see a map of something or to get more details or to see a related Sometimes article. I like to continue reading this article, click here. I've seen that at a, at a number of these. You, they only have like the first couple paragraphs. Yeah. And this isn't even like a login thing. That, yeah, it's even yeah. just like, like oh, it's two ways. One, first, it's just click here to read the rest of this article. Yeah. So it's just an unnecessary step, which annoys me. Or it's like take this quick survey. To, yes. You know, and that's different than progressive that's, disclosure. That's different. Yeah. Okay. Progressive disclosure is where I just show you the headline in a couple sentences, and then you click if you want to read more. And then, like I said, while you're in it, maybe you could click to read another article or related article or uh, see a see uh, a graphic or see go explore the interactive map that goes with it that would be progressive disclosure mm, okay i'm getting a better idea of what this is actually now this is um so this is much this is much more of i'll give you i'll give you uh, uh, an example where you have a very simple uh graphic yeah um that shows some information yeah and then you can click on something to, to kind of dive deeper and see even more in, information and get into the like the nitty gritty if you want. But then you can like. Come yeah, I mean, you might have a map that shows um, uh, the incidence of the flu for the past week mm -hmm. in a particular geographic region, and then you can click on part of the geographic region, region and then get more details about, you know, the flu reports in okay. that area. That makes That's more progressive sense. disclosure. That makes more sense to me. Do you still not like it? No, I that when when looking at it in that in that way, that I, that that makes a lot more sense. But I don't think that's your natural tendency. Um, me? Yeah. Well, See, in order to do progressive disclosure uh, effectively, you have to understand your audience pretty well and know what for them is enough hmm. and what, what, because the idea is not that you're necessarily trying to get them to click for more information or go get more information. Hmm. You're trying to give people what they need or want, uh, which for some people in some situations might be, that's all I want. I just wanted that. I just wanted the three sentence summary of the war of 1812. Um, and, uh, but for some people that's not what they want. They want more. And you're trying to build, mm. uh, an information structure that where you so that you can give the right amount of people the right amount of information to the most number of people so you have to really know your audience pretty well in the context in which they are uh, consuming the information in order to know what are the right bite-sized chunks so then differentiate for me mm -hmm. progressive disclosure from clickbait progressive disclosure versus clickbait well let's talk about clickbait Mm -hmm. What do you want to define clickbait? Yes, clickbait is the uh, it's very simple. 
it's the uh, the the classic um uh five shocking fact five facts that might shock you about foods that could be dangerous <laughs> yes right? uh it's it's and it's, if you click on it what happens you get an article okay did you know tuna is high in lead and lead can cause abnormalities it's not high in lead is it it's Dude, high in mercury mercury sorry so what's the purpose of clickbait so it's for you to click on it and why do they want you to click on it it's for ads so, so to to, to, to draw sorry to drive traffic well, sometimes with click, well, what do you mean to drive traffic? Why do they want to drive traffic? It's so they can have more ad revenue or more yeah. eyeballs. Yeah. I mean, more, more eyeballs is more better in basically any universe. Well, you know, this goes, because um, there's that the whole thing about the um, the teenagers in the little town in, uh, what country is it? Shoot. Some some country in Eastern Europe, uh, which which apparently most of the or many uh, the largest amount of fake news sites during the recent U.S. presidential race was coming out of this one little town. The, this these researchers traced fake news articles, and there were like more of them coming out of this little town of. 50,000 people, well, it's not that little, but 50,000 people in the middle of Europe. And he uh, actually was able to find out who some of these people were. And many of them were teenagers, like they weren't even 20 years old. And they just, it was all about making money because they would put these fake news out and people would come and click and then they could sell ads on their page. That's how, well, I mean, that's how all... And that's what, yeah. I mean, that's just how so all what, digital so, media. But but clickbait has nothing to do with fake news. Every there are lots of have rep, to. lots of reputable news organizations yes. use it to some extent. But it could and be used for fake it, news. The, the most the most. Uh, yeah, the, you could use regular art of headlines for fake news. I don't I don't yeah. see that. Well, okay. I, the. I, the most, you know, there's like, yeah, there's the most egregious sites that are really trying to drive traffic. But every every site, for the most part, does it a little bit to kind of sensationalize headlines just a touch. So, so do you make a, a distinction between just, you know, what we would call principles of copy editing versus clickbait? Uh, Let's get our copy editor... Uh, Yes. Um, copy, let's get our copywriter audience uh, really upset here <laughs> and compare them all I, to clickbaiters. I think the copywriters out there under, know where the line is, they're, they're, that there is a nuance to it. And one, but you are supposed to write, you know, headlines and and the whole idea behind copywriting is... You you have a headline and a no, one or two sentences that people want to go read. More. I think I think the difference is is that with clickbait you are purposely either misleading, or not disclosing key facts that would be really 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 like important to the reader that makes so the reader assumes things are worse than they are. To so so you're misrepresenting the article and I'll give you the perfect example. Okay. Um, I believe a couple. Uh, months ago, during the height of the presidential election, there was an incident in which Mike, I believe it was Mike Pence, his airplane slid off a icy runway. Okay. Right? Um, and I remember, um, now, I, like I said, I... This I, is good. This is a test of memory. Did, did this happen at all? Is he remembering this <laughs> accurately or, the, or not? It could have been. I, so someone slid off the runway. I thought it was Mike Pence. Um, but I could, it, it was, it, it wasn't Hillary or Trump, I don't think, but it was one of the, somebody, of, yeah, I thought it was Mike Pence. It could have been Tim Kaine, but it, it was, I thought it was a VP. Um, and, and so now I am a member of the Washington Post and I remember, I, I you're I, a member? Well, I subscribe. I'm a, okay. I'm a subscriber of the Washington Post, okay. just the online version. I don't get real newspapers sent to me, but, um, and so I, you know, so I have a bias. I like the Washington Post, but I remember, uh, you know, I had gone on, um, you know, I go to Google news and I was looking and then, you know, there was the CNN article, right. Um, uh, you know, 
Pence plane slides off runway, right? Or like during landing, Pence plane, uh, like as you know, is 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 like, um, you know, like like incident on airport with Pence plane, you know, right? Yeah. So like so like the the thing you it was you know big headline news. Yeah. So Mike Pence is dead, and you <laughs> need like a new, right? Like and so that was that was the headline. Right? Yeah. Well, the headline wasn't Mike Pence is dead. No, 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 no. I but know. it was something about the way it Mike was written. Mike Pence's plane has, is, but you know, they didn't say crashed, right? But, but like something, slides. Yeah, something you know, implied or, that it was really serious. That it was very, very, very serious. Yeah. That was the headline, And right? you clicked on it. Uh, was this on the, maybe, and then, was this at the Washington Post? No, site? well, see, this is what I remember because the Washington Post headline read, um, Mike Pence plane slides off runway, uh, no injuries reported. Yeah, so that's uh, that's you know? interesting. Yeah, so right, so that's and I always I was like, wow, like thank you, Washington Post, for actually like that's like saying what, what happened, what happened, and I and I wanted to click on that article because I wanted to read about it, but it didn't right, but it wasn't driving clicks through sensationalism. So, all right, well then that then maybe that's an example of the difference between progressive disclosure and clickbait. Hmm. So the idea behind clickbait is. I think it's an. I think it's partly it a feels difference. Feels dirty, it right? Feels, it feels like you're, you're, you're uh, lying or misrepresenting. Lying, misrepresenting the yeah, situation. and I think that so, so, because I think the difference between clickbait and progressive disclosure is uh, intent. So with progressive disclosure, the idea is not that we want you to click; that we're trying to get mm. you to click. Okay. Ah. Progressive disclosure, the intention is as much that you don't click than that you do. It's all about ah. trying to give I'm you I'm learning something today. Well, that's amazing. Trying to get <laughs> trying to give you the information you need so that you can make the decision that works best for you. Mm. That's So the intent the is whole good. Purpose. What? So the intent is good. Well, that's a value judgment, but it, uh, but it, but the, no, the intent is to help the reader. The definitely the intent is to help the reader, is okay. to help you, is to give you what you need at that moment, no more, no less, so that you can either that was it, that's all you needed, or you can make the decision yourself. I would like to get some more information. Hmm. Mm, right. And clickbait, the intent. Is is to to, to, to take click. advantage of the reader's aversion to fear by saying they will die or someone has died or strike the fear of you know sex or death or drama in some in some way. Um. Yeah. I mean the 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 intent is to get you to click for the clickbait. Okay. Okay. So 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 that that makes yeah. I feel I feel a little bit. It's different. It's that's different. So that's that's good. I'm glad I understand that distinction now because I did not well, before. Do you do you have a tendency to think whenever you see a headline or, or a headline in a couple of sentences that they're they're do you think it's clickbait rather than progressive disclosure? Like, are you just automatically assuming? Oh, they're just trying to get me to click. Uh, I mean, a lot of it. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But a lot of it really is clickbait. Like, if you just go on, it's actually gotten a little bit better. I feel over the past couple of months because I think fewer people are clicking on it. Like if I see a clickbait headline, I do not click on it on principle. I don't know. I think it's, you know, I feel you, like a couple months, like maybe like six, eight months ago was like peak of like the worst of the worst. And now they're kind of easing back just a little, but that's just my opinion. I could be totally wrong. But you see those ones where they're using the same phrase, like it'll say, you won't believe what happens, <laughs> right? Don't they say it that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you won't the, believe. The, 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 watch. The... You won't believe what happens next, or right. I. You won't believe what happens to these two sorority girls. <laughs> or and the, or there'll be like a, a there'll be like a picture and it involves two cars and you know you know and so you just assume there's going to be some. I never disaster. ever ever click on that ever. But you know what? What. People do. I know people do. I know people do. I just feel like... That's why they keep using it, because it works. Because it works. It's, it's so effective. And I'm not, you know... Um... That's like banner ads. Does, has that phrase even used anymore? 
it is. But I they mean, don't. there are banner ads still. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Banner ads being a banner, a, a, long, a, a, a long, a long horizontal, recta- horizontal, or it could be vertical. I suppose uh, uh, adver- rectangular advertisement ad that at is, a website that usually moves and jumps and squiggles Sometimes around. Sometimes has a you know, yeah, they're still around. Ab- ab- absolutely, because. Uh, I remember I was giving a talk at some conference, and this was a long time ago when, like, banner ads had just come out or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a ch- it was a group of marketing people, and I had said something derogatory about banner ads. And someone came up to me afterwards and said, "You know, um, if one percent of the people click on it." We can make lots of money, so we don't. You know, we don't need nine. The other ninety nine percent can right. just be annoyed and not click. We don't care. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And they shouldn't care. Why should they? They really shouldn't care. Because they just wanted just, that. Yeah. To, Look, I don't. One percent. Though I guess what what annoys me is that I mean I don't like ads, but no one likes ads. At least when it's an ad, people understand it's an ad. No, mm-hmm. that's a millennial thing. This is a generational difference. Oh. Did you know that? Because, and what annoys me most about clickbait is that, is that, well, now the it's content, masquerading. the content that I want to read is, is actually in itself an ad. So like the fake product placement stuff drives me crazy. That said, a lot of people my age love the fake product placement stuff. What do you mean by the fake product placement stuff? Um, it's an article about, um, the, the danger, the danger things of food, but you know, um, you know, I did some research, and there's a supplement you can get, right, that actually helps prevent the blah, 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 right? And so... And people like that. A lot of people do. Look at Instagram. We were at um, we were at a conference recently, and they were talking about the... Uh, uh, the oh, my God. Not, they're not champions. Um, uh, what are you talking about? Oh, my God. What's the term? Um, there's Evangelists? The, is that what it is? What I don't know. I'm not sure what uh, you're talking about. There's the about. people who are famous on YouTube or Instagram. Oh, oh, oh. Um, oh, shoot. I can't it's remember like the right name there. Influencers. Influencers. So, right, so so these are just famous kind of um, uh, online persona celebrity types. Yeah. And, you know, right, so, like, a lot of people subscribe to their Instagram account, and they're there, and they're, like, you know, modeling some jeans or something. Right. But, like, half of the stuff they're modeling, they're... Paid, paid to, do, to do but they don't say they're paid to do right so you're looking at content that is an advertisement that you that that you, you are feel is just content it's just content that bugs me personally but it obviously doesn't does not bug does, them does, doesn't they have bug millions, millions, of, followers. millions of followers so um so that may just be like me just being a grumpy old anti-advertisement person um so that could that's potentially just me but i think these are good examples of uh generational differences and I would posit that the well, the, what are the generational differences? Yeah, you said that earlier, and then I cut well, you off. Well, first of all, let me comment on what you just said yeah. because um, you're a, you're a millennial, but you're actually in the older group of millennials. No, you're not. I'm right in the middle. Oh, but these influencer <laughs> people weren't they a little younger? And the people that were following them aren't they like in their early 20s yeah and, so or late there, teens there does appear to be a split yes so in the millennial um group. so millennials help me help me with the uh with the year well when we did the gen x stop mm, don't don't give me the age give me the year they were born because oh. the years keep progressing oh boy well the boomers let's see yeah what was the cutoff line for the boomers 64 Three, I think. Okay, so then the Gen Xers would probably be like 82, 81 maybe? What do you mean? The cutoff? Yeah. From 63 to like 81? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ball, uh, ballpark. ballpark. Give, give, a yes. couple, give or take a couple years. Yes. Um, so the millennials then are from like 83 to, yes. to like 91, 92. Uh, Four. Well, let's see. If you were born in two thousand, you're seventeen. You're not a millennial. Yeah. You just kind of yeah, missed so it's, it's, it. It's so in the mid ninety mid ninety four, ninety five, yeah. ninety six somewhere yeah. right there. Right. So I was born in eighty nine. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of. You're I'm, in the middle, I'm, but a little uh, bit towards. I'm the... like, if I remember correctly, when I did all this, I'm in the middle, and I'm like, 
maybe like one year on the older side. Yes. But yes. but very but very close to very the middle. Very close to the middle. Um and there does seem to be a line. Yeah. Right in the middle of the millennial generation. Yeah. Uh, between the older half of the millennials yeah. and the younger half. And the younger half seem to be a lot, the older half seem to be a little bit more like the young Gen Xers, which are very different from the old Gen Xers. And the younger half seem to be a lot more like the generation underneath them, we call the Gen Yeah, I I agree with you. So the reason I brought this up is that, um, so first of all, uh, there's a general trend if we look uh, uh, outside that millennial split you were talking about, but if we just compare like millennials, for instance, if you compare millennials and baby boomers in in terms of their reaction to advertising online. Mm -hmm. So baby boomers, I mean, we're all used to advertising online, but baby boomers really don't like advertising online. And they find it extremely annoying and they still don't understand why it's there. And this is back to that idea, you know, you and I talk about in in some of our speeches about expectations. So um, baby boomers, if there's an ad on TV, that doesn't bother baby boomers at all. Of course there's ads on TV. There's always ads on TV, right? But ads on a computer? No, 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 no. Computers don't have ads, right? So this is just an mm. expectation. Whereas I think millennials, right? I mean, do you just, of course there's ads. I mean, you might still find them annoying, but yeah. there's ads. Yeah, no. The I... fact of ads is not annoying. Yeah. It's the particular ads. But then I think you get even younger and you get, depends, of course, on the ad, where the younger people get they they like some of the ads well, they find them interesting I mean, entertaining it, it, there's nothing that would per- prevent an ad from being interesting content right it can be a funny sketch it can be a cool pair of jeans that's also See, you know, integrated i think uh, baby boomers would very rarely expect an ad to be I don't, entertaining interesting or informative see th- that's the thing i don't like when an ad tries to pretend to not be an ad. Yes. But I'm okay with ads ad, that are yeah. tailored to my interest. In fact, I prefer it. I'd like I don't want to watch an ad about like, I don't know, some something I just don't care about. I'd rather watch an ad for for a product that I'm actually interested in. And that's why I don't know, the whole idea of of Google tracking everything I do on one hand of course is terrifying and they only do it so they can, you know, direct more targeted ads on the other hand i like having ads that are targeted to my interest interesting they're much it's much more interesting and i feel like it's less intrusive ah you see a baby boomer would find that terrifying that the most intrusive right the idea that you are actually are collecting data on me and then trying to feed me an ad based on that would would definitely be horrifying and and would make people not like the ad think of it this way have you ever seen a commercial that made you laugh that was that that like, actually made you feel a little bit better that was funny that you know, that was kind of interesting in some way i'm thinking the silence indicates thought i can't i can't identify no? one there's there's a lot of ads that i can think of that like that you know yeah there were ads and i'd rather they weren't there be there but at least they were kind of fun and you know it's like some of the geico ads make me laugh with the you know the, the, yeah i don't get kind of the fun. geico ads mm-hmm. you know but then there's uh there's just various ads that are um that are like that that are suited to me that i again i hate ads more than most i would really prefer to just never see them but i don't find them that annoying yeah so well so that and that's the generational difference yeah. i was talking about okay all right, now why did we get off on this though? Because uh, we were talking about clickbait. Well, we were, yeah, we were talking yeah we were talking about the difference between progressive disclosure and yeah, clickbait. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, so we got a little sidetracked. But, so, uh, do you think progressive disclosure then yeah, is just get to lumped together with clickbait and just no, 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 no? I think I think I may have done that inadvertently. What do you mean? I, I may have lumped them together. Yeah, that's why I wonder, I'm wondering if you did it, then maybe a lot of people do. 
So maybe whenever you see a headline and a couple of mm. lines, you are automatically on alert? I, well, I, growing up in the wild west of the internet, I don't trust, and I think being a lot of millennials, we don't trust anything we see. Everything is trying to get us, is either trying is either a scam, fraud, trying to get us to click on something, trying to pretend it's something and then have a, you know, like a full page pop-up show up so that we have to cl- click around it. Um, we, so how do you, so then how do you deal with that as a, as a information very, consumer? Very, per, me personally, I'm very, very wary. If I see something that I think is clickbait and that I think is just going to kind of like, like be very annoying just to get my attention, uh, I'm not going to click on it. If I go to a page, whether there, there's an article that I want to read and something pops up and I hit that and I hit the little X and then something pops up again, I just leave. I'm not going to deal with this. I, ne- I never go back to the website. Do you tend to stay with trusted sources of information as a result? I mean, do you think you, for instance, you mentioned the Washington Post. Well, I pay so. to have a Washington Post service that doesn't have ads. Ah. It, like I said, I'm a subscriber. So the, it, there's, there's so no that's ads. Worth there's it no to clickbait. You because yeah, and it's good quality content that literally comes to my phone. It's, it's like... Um, it's like it's like a TV show, right? Where a new episode comes out every couple minutes, every single day. Do it's you nice. think that your uh, do you think this is common in for millennials to pay for access? No, because we're poor. But um, I think it's probably more common than in other generations. I think if millennials had more money, they would. Hmm. So, uh, I mean, you look at the rise of Netflix. Because uh, there's no ads, I think that's very that's very common. There's been a number of different uh, sources that have that have experimented with that model. Um, I think it would be a, a bit more successful, but it, it does it does depend on the intrusiveness of the ads. It really yeah. it really does. If there's a little ad on the side, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't even you know I don't even see it anymore. I just I'm so used to it. But if it's like right, if I have to do stuff, if if they're if they are imp- impeding, if they if they have like hold out a little, here's what I don't like, they hold out like a little nugget, like here's a cool article, something you really want to read, right? But in order to get get to it, right, you have to like first um, like see a full page ad, and then you have to go here, and you have to turn off ad blocker because we don't like that. So then once you turn off ad blocker, then you can go and. And then, like, we'll have, like, a couple, like, it's, you're scrolling, and then it's, like, the ad is up on the page. Yeah, you have to scroll through yeah. the ad. And so now I've, I've like, in order to read this article that I want to read, it's taken me, like, you know, like, 35 seconds, right. which in Internet time is, is forever time. to actually just, like, do this. So do like you that. think there's anything that uh, a, a content provider can or should do to distinguish... Hmm what the, what they have if it, let's say they are they do want to use progressive disclosure not clickbait what could they do so that you would not uh, think that it was clickbait right right um well we know they should not say you won't believe you won't believe <laughs> what happens what happens to these two almost naked sorority girls driving in this fast car all right, so we know that they're not going to do that. Audience, you would click on that. Don't lie. <laughs> you, if you saw that headline, you would. You I would know, not. You would I know would better, and you do it anyways because you just can't help yourself. Um, so for progressive, uh, progressive, dis- pro, God. <laughs> <laughs> progressive disclosure. Yes. Easy for you to say. <laughs> um. Yeah, is there anything they could do so that you wouldn't confuse it with clickbait? I mean, basically, how, are we killing progressive the idea of progressive disclosure because now everyone thinks everything is clickbait? There is certainly a virus. There's <laughs> definitely a virus um, that is infected progressive disclosure because the the idea that that idea that oh you want so like I'm just it's just very scary. Um, the, the, obviously, the easiest way to do it is make it is just make it very clear that it's not clickbait. If I, if there's a how do I do that? If there's a, if there's a link and I click on the link, just have it go to the article. Yeah. Right. And if there's an info, infographic, there. Yeah. 
make it cl- and I click on it, it just goes to the infographic. Yeah. Right. And once and once you develop that chain, that when you do this, it will take you to the content yeah. you want, and the page you want. Yeah. Then you then you gain then then you have my trust and then I trust, and then and that's all. I don't think you need to do a whole lot. Uh, uh, make the headline interesting but not sensational. I, well, you know, if you truly want to do progressive disclosure, but again, there's so much stuff online. I mean, I know. Look, there are a lot of people, a lot probably people listening, who's you know millennials sitting at companies, and their job is to drive traffic with clicks. Yeah, no, I was talking about if you really just wanted to do progressive disclosure. Yeah, let's say, yeah, so so if you have 100%. You're not trying to drive traffic. You're, you're, just, you're just looking out for what's best for the, for. for yeah, the, you just don't want to overload people with information uh, if they don't, if they just want a little bit. Um, but you want them to be able to get more information you know if they want more. You know what would be really, really, really cool? Hmm. And some websites do this just a tiny, 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 tiny little bit. Hmm. But I would actually really like to see this. So you have the headline, right? Yeah. And then at a couple um, news, let's just take a news outlet, for example. Mm-hmm. At the top, they have maybe four or five bullet points with with the basically the whole story. Yeah. Right. So pick a pick any story from from, from recently that that was in the news that you saw. Oh goodness, I don't know. Uh, any story. Uh, well, Carrie Fisher died. Right. So you'd have you know you'd have the headline. Right, and so so then you have your four bullet points, right? Um, uh, uh, Carrie Fisher, known star, rose actress, uh, dead at the age of sixty, um, suffered a, a cardiac uh, the, the incident on an airplane. Uh, unfortunately, because of the because of, you know next bullet point, because she was on an airplane, uh, there was limited you know medical capability. Uh, she's been in ICU, blah blah blah. She, you know she survived by her daughter, whatever. right? So so those five. Five little bullet points. Yeah. Tell me everything, really, that I need to know about the story. Yes. And then, um, so that's, and that's your progressive disclosure, right? Yes. Now, if I want to keep reading, underneath that, I yeah, have, like, I the full can. article. What would be even better is yeah. you have the bullet points. Yeah. Like, the full article, or the, sorry, the headline, bullet points. And then, um, like, a two-paragraph summary. Yeah. If I or 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 I could like click on the level of information I wanted, yes. Because people don't read the, you right? Like you know, ninety percent, whatever it is, ninety percent of the people only read twenty five percent. I mean, I don't, I, you know, the citation. Yeah, the 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 research shows that, um, uh, the most people read of an yeah, article sixty percent. Yeah, so. Um, right, so people and they are, tend to share it either at the end and, or, or at the twenty-five percent mark. So well, you know, most people are just kind of skimming, anyways. And so, so then, so you could have like a, um, so you'd have you know the the headline, bullet points, um, the like a you know like a two paragraph kind of quick summary with a little more information, and then the full thing with the sites and the sources and the quotes and you know the full article. And so if you're really interested, you could read the full thing. So I think what you so on. what I'm hearing you say is that would that, be wonderful for me. That is that All right, here's what I think you're saying is because of the issue of clickbait. If you want to use pro, truly use progressive disclosure, not clickbait to drive traffic, but you're really just trying to be useful in how much information you're presenting. You may now, it, it might be true that now you have to present more information initially than maybe you did, you know, 20, 25 mm-hmm. years ago. You got to give me something. You have to give, well, only because you don't trust anymore. <laughs> trust has been killed and you don't trust that you're really going to give me more. But if I give you more up front, now you're a little more trusting. I've seen um, a couple uh i've seen a number of places do this actually um so one of my favorite tech sites is ars technica mm-hmm. shout out to to the people over at ours and what they do is they'll have um their headline yeah and they have interesting headline too because sometimes it'll just be um like a quote yeah um or something so so like the headline the headline would be um, Windows outlines uh, their their uh, Windows 10 roadmap for for 2016 or okay. 2017, right? Okay. Um, that'll be the headline, okay. and underneath the headline, they always have uh, like a sentence. Yeah. Right. So, um, big things are in store for Windows. The creative uh, creative uh, the creators 
um, update will, uh, it will be coming soon in in February. Yeah. Right. So they give you. So it's not just the title. It's a title and then context. Yeah. With a, with some with like a fact. Yeah. And then after that, and then you can click on that and you go to like the well, full yeah, thing. Yeah, that's yeah. called progressive disclosure. I know. I really like that. <laughs> but well, a lot of places just do the headline. Yeah. It's just the headline. Yeah. Which um, I've seen a number of places do it. Uh, also, where you, where you have the headline, and then um, I think Medium does this, and they give you like the first. It's you know, it's like it's kind of blog style where there's the headline, yeah. and there's the first like three sentences, three sentences whatever, yeah. like fits on there. Yeah. Um, I think that's cool, but like yeah, so like here, whatever website I was literally at on my phone, yeah. For example, okay, I scroll down to the bottom, and here's what I have. Okay, right. So um, Apple publishes its first artificial intelligence paper. That's all it says. That's kind of iPhone yeah. Seven Plus suffering serious hardware problem. Those are the real articles. Okay. Yeah. Here is the quote from the web. Ready? Yeah. How to tell. When a slot is close to hitting the jackpot, exclamation okay, point. Yes. All right. So. <laughs> Twenty-five former hot celebs who have aged very badly oh, yeah, in photos. A very popular one. Twenty twenty right. vision breakthrough. Weird trick restores perfect vision in seven days. Okay. All right. You can stop now. But but that so 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 the first couple I said were was actually that was Forbes by the way was actually four real Forbes articles and then they had the ads for the for the, yeah. for the for the weird stuff. Yeah. Um, me, meanwhile, so for if if I go to um, um, ours, uh, right? So so the biggest, baddest rocket launches and landings of 2016, uh, sub subtext: the most powerful firecrackers on Earth lit up the sky often this year. Yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna say when you were back at the 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 one you were just doing, and yeah. you had the apple. Yeah. See, now there's an example I think where that. That headline, either that headline wasn't very good, or it whether it was good or not, it would have been better to have. Cause well, it was like I think they, they did that on publishing purpose. The, they published their first AI article. But from a progressive disclosure point of view, it would have been good to have one or two lines more. Like, mm -hmm. why is this important, or what was it about? Um, do you know what I mean? That, again, but again, this idea being progressive disclosure is not just about capturing your interest. Yeah. Progressive disclosure is about giving you enough information so that you have a useful piece of information right now, and then you can choose whether to go get more. Can I give you the perfect example from ours? Yeah. So they reviewed the AirPods, the horribly stupid, in my opinion, um, Apple wireless headphones. Yes. And so here's here's the here's the headline. Okay. okay. Review. Colon. Okay. The AirPods are fine. Wireless headphones for a certain type of person. Here's the sub. Here's this the sub tag. Okay. In smaller in smaller print. Yeah. If you're way into Apple, your earpods fit, and you have expendable cash, welcome. Yeah, see, that's interesting. So that now you've got... It basically kind of gives you the conclusion of yeah. the review. Yeah. And then if, you, if you're actually curious, then you can click on it and learn more. So it's, it takes time to do this well. It does. I mean, because you got to think about... I mean, it, it, it's not easy to write a good headline or a good summary. Um, there's that old uh, quote that is attributed to like 10 different people uh and supposedly it was said by george bernard shaw and albert einstein i it, which was i i would have uh they here's this famous story they walked up to somebody and said uh uh, uh you wrote uh oh god i gotta get this right um they had written a monograph you know a short paper uh, and in, are, are you going to write a full article or are you going to write the monograph, the short paper? Well, I would have written the monograph if I'd had more time. The idea being the shorter mm. it is to write, the harder it is. Mm. Uh, the, and I really botched that story. But And I don't know whether that was George <laughs> Bernard Shaw or if that was Albert Einstein. You won't believe how else. this woman botches a story about Einstein. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it does. It takes a lot of time to write something in a short way that's that's really well written. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's so to do progressive disclosure well is not necessarily an easy thing to do. I still have hope for progressive disclosure because of good coding. Good coding. So um, you can do some really, 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 really cool stuff with JavaScript. So you think we might be able to do this? Well, with think an of all algorithm? the, the so think of the infra, interactive infographics that we can get yeah. now, right? Yeah. Where right, you have all the counties in the U.S. and then you hover over one, yes. you click on it, right, and you see like the you can expand and get more information. So and you that's, think, uh, if, and yeah, with better yeah. tools, you can do a better that's job true. of it. And that's, that's probably easier to do with uh, visuals in some ways with than big it data. is to do with text. Yeah, yeah, it might be w actually way easier to do. That's um, an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to think more about that. Now, one thing I do want to throw in here that I don't think we mentioned before, but you can tell me if we did, which is. Um, in some cultures, uh, like some Eastern cultures, like I know Japan is one of them, uh, according to the research anyway, um, people don't like progressive disclosure at all. Mm. There, There's a fear that I'm going to miss important information, mm. so I want you to give me everything. Just give it, I, 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 I just isn't want that, it all. Uh, isn't that generally a Gen X thing as well? I don't know. I always feel like um, uh, the, uh, the the Gen Xers. The if you look at um, software from the from the kind of the the Gen Xers use. Yeah. Very very busy, because they want to have yeah. all. But they also in like to personalize things. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So Gen Xers, you can write into us and tell us whether you like uh, progressive disclosure or not. Whereas I think I mean obviously the move has probably correctly been towards simplification. Yeah. In a lot of different ways. So, right, menus, sub menus. Yeah. It makes like like on mobile that like gets a lot easier. Yeah. Because you can always use the excuse, well, there's just you don't have room to put. But a you lot do. Of stuff. I mean, anytime you do you do progressive disclosure or sub menus. I mean, yeah. it, it. I'm thinking of the old SAP are, portals with like the 27, right. the because inventory, if and the you're tracking. Doing it, if you're doing progressive disclosure, then things are hidden. I mean, that's just the nature of it. Right. 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 And so it's a question of how much can you handle things being hidden in order well that's a that's a to danger be too because I remember um, I think it was a couple of years ago maybe like six years like six or six years ago I think it was a while ago uh, Microsoft had done a study of uh, Microsoft office users you know yeah. PowerPoint word yeah Excel and um, they uh, they said hey what what feature would you love to see in the new Microsoft office yes. right give us your list and like 92% of all the suggestions that they wrote in with yeah. already existed in, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in, in the product. They just didn't know didn't how to know get there. Didn't know Yeah, they didn't uh, know how to get there. Were, it was so complicated and hidden. Yep. You're, you, you're a UX person. I am. It is just, just a couple thoughts. Thoughts on the ribbon. Very controversial. The ribbon system of Office. Okay, that uh, I, I'm gonna say that would make a great episode for the podcast. Just, just like Roger Ebert's thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down. You okay? And then maybe we can uh, okay. talk about that on another episode. Huh? I'm not, I'm not sure yet because I understand it's not perfect, but I've been I, I've tried to think of like a better way to do it because there's just so many options. Well. And it's All tough. Right. So why don't we why don't we talk about that uh, <laughs> next or next time or in an upcoming episode? Because that's a combination of information architecture and progressive disclosure in some ways. So we can uh, in all we hey, talk about props that. to Microsoft. I feel like actually the last two three years they've they've made real big strides of putting kind of UX first in a lot of different ways in Windows ten and in their Office three sixty suite. So I think they're they're definitely moving in the right right direction. I'm like Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear I, that. I, I, okay. I, I, I had to cough. All right, so uh, Guthrie, uh, we've we've uh, wasted another hour, and and we've uh, wasted another one of your hours. <laughs> And we apologize. For <laughs> we that. apologize profusely. But we'd like to ask you to keep on Hopefully listening. Hopefully, it was an hour wasting, well, well wasted. Keep, waste more time with us. Yeah. And if you like wasting time with us, subscribe. This is, this is better than watching binge watching something on Netflix for an hour. I don't know. 
Anyway, subscribe. You could, in theory, be productive while you're listening to this. That's true. You could be getting paid at work while you're listening to this. Or at least, you know. Doing dishes. Yeah, cleaning your house or something. or Going on a run. Uh, uh, snow showing. Designing we have something lots of snow with progressive here. disclosure. So, um, guys, if you like what we're doing, please uh, let other people know. Please subscribe to us. Please rate us on uh, whatever your podcast technology is. And um, thanks for listening. Bye, Guthrie. Hey, see ya. Have a, uh, have a great week, everyone. Oh, and um, hopefully everyone had a wonderful uh, holiday And uh, fest. have a great and new year. Have a happy new year, which will be coming up next week. Bye.